One important use of derivatives is to estimate uh, values of functions. In fact, um, lots of your calculator uh, routines will use those to estimate sines and cosines and, and, and whatever. And you'll learn more about this in calculus too. But we're going to take our first steps <coughs> excuse me, towards estimating functions in, 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 this, in section 3.5. Okay, recall, first of all, the, the, the estimations, the idea of estimating function depends on, on, on a function being differentiable. So let's recall what we mean by a function being differentiable. All right, remember that the derivative of a function, f prime of x, so the derivative of f, is given by this limit as h approaches 0 of f of x plus h minus f of x all over h. And... Um, and that we'd say that f is differentiable at x if, when we replace those x's with that value of x, the, if the, this limit exists, we say that that's differentiable. The function is differentiable. Okay, we had some geometric characteristics, things that would, which would, uh, you know, basically di uh, characteristics of differentiability, and and maybe I should say geometric characteristics of indifferentiability. For example, a function is not differentiable, all right, the limit does not exist at values of x where the, the graph is broken, where the graph has a break in it. And in this case, this function will not have a derivative, will not be differentiable at x is equal to negative 1 half. There's that negative 1, 0. At x is equal to negative 1, this one's not differentiable because a break will prevent it from being differentiable. Another thing that will prevent differentiability is a cusp or a sharp corner on a graph. This one it appears that this function will not be differentiable at positive 1 half because of that sharp corner on the graph at that at that point. And finally, a third thing that prevents a function from di being differentiable is a is a vertical tangent. This is the cube root of x, and it's not differentiable at 0 because there's a vertical tangent at 0. Okay, so what we want to do is we want to assume that a function is differentiable, and if it's differentiable, all right, then the, a way we can look at that, or what that would mean here, is let me bring up this, uh, this graphic. What that would mean is, is notice that if a function is differentiable, all right, if we zoom in, for instance, this function is x squared, and this is at 1, and x squared is differentiable at 1. If we zoom in on that point, remember that the function looks more and more like a straight line. In fact, in fact, if here's the tangent line at one, if we zoom in on that, on that point again, the function looks more and more like that tangent line. All right. So the idea behind linear approximation is that if we want to, if we want to estimate this function nearby at some nearby point, let's say over here, okay. All right. We want to estimate this function at this point. All right, well, instead of using the, the point, the y value of the function itself, we could use the y value of the tangent line, and they'd be approximately, they'd be approximately the same. So the y value on the tangent line, which will usually be easier to compute, will, be, will serve as an estimate for the y value of the function, for the function value. All right, let's take a look at an example of this. Let's suppose, well, some examples that we'll do, you know, through these videos is, is we'll estimate the square root of 25, uh, 24. Notice the square root of 24, 24 is near 25, a place where the, the square root is easy to, to evaluate, all right? And we'll estimate the sine of 31 degrees. Again, the sine of, th of 31 degrees, 31 degrees is near 30 degrees a place where sine is, is easily evaluated. All right, let's take a look at the first, uh, well, at the, the idea behind it, well, and this is no secret, is that to estimate a value of a function using local linear approximations, we first of all find the tangent line at the, at the, at the known value, the place where the function is nicely evaluated, and then we find the y value of, at on that tangent line for the nearby by x value. Let's let's 
think of this this situation all right all right let's suppose we want to estimate the square root of 24 okay well let's think of our function here f of x as being the square root of x then its derivative is 1 over 2 times the square root of x and if you remember that it, this is the same as x to the 1 half you'll see that that's the case and let's let I'll call this x0 be equal to 25 and the reason why I use that is because 25 is a nice value in other words it's it's an easily it's an easily evaluated value for these okay so let's let's come up with the tangent line okay and the tangent line all right we'll let give come up with our x value our x value is 25 our f of x value which was square root of 25 which is equal to 5 and then our f prime value which is 1 over 2 times the square root of 25 which is 1 over 2 times 5 1 tenth or 0.1 okay now we could come up with this the equation of the tangent line remember y minus y sub 0 is equal to m times the quantity x minus x sub 0 where x sub 0 and y sub 0 are x and y values of a point on the on the line and m is its slope so here we would have y minus well the y value what would be given by f y minus 5 is equal to 1 tenth the slope given by f prime uh, times the quantity x minus 25 and this of course would be what we would have here is y is equal to 1 tenth x minus 2.5 1 tenth of 25 is 2.5 plus 5 or y is equal to 1 tenth x um, plus 2.5 and now now that I have the tangent line evaluate the tangent line at x equals 24 at x is equal to 24 and if we do that we'd have y is equal to 1 tenth of 24 plus 2.5 and 1 tenth of 24 is 2.4 so we'd have 2.4 plus 2.5 and that's going to be 4.9 so 4.9 is going to serve as our our estimate of the square root of 24 All right. I've done this work below here in this in this example and notice here's 4.9 is our estimate of the square root of 24 on Microsoft Excel we calculate the square root we'll use your more accurate methods and to calculate the square root of 20 uh, 24 to about 15 significant digits and notice that that's 4.8989 so it is only about one ten thousand off um, this this estimate this is a very good estimate All right let's take a look at what we've what we've just done All right here's the square root of x okay and here in this black point is at 25 we've calculated the tangent line at 25 the other point is at 24 and notice what we've done let me zoom in on that notice what we've done is basically here would be the exact value this y value would be the exact value of the square root of 25 because it's on the curve the square root of x itself we've used as an estimate the square root of 
uh, excuse me, the, va the y value on the tangent line. And if you think about these, they're very, very close to each other. Notice that this only differs by by two one thousandths of a unit here and these are this is maybe half as much so you know, it's it, 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 it's it's a very very good estimate in this case the estimates won't always be as good um but 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 in this case it's a very very good estimate